Hi, I'm Mrs. Patterson, and I'm going to be playing the first violin part to Main Street March. Before we play all the way through it, I want to go through and talk about, first of all, the lift bows. There are a ton of lift bows in this one, but at least they're marked with the commas. So right away, the very first thing you have to do is a lift bow. Down, lift. Okay, so you might want to take a second and just practice lots of lift bows. doing lots and lots of lift bows. You're going to be doing a lot of them in this piece. Um, <clears throat> next, um, I want to talk about the difference between a half rest and a whole rest because I know that's probably new for a lot of you and I just wanted to point that at measure 17. If the little box is sitting on the third line, that's a half rest and that gets two beats of silence. In measure 18, you see the box is hanging from the fourth line and that is a whole rest that gets four beats of silence. So measure 17, you're going to count like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, play. Okay, so make sure you know how to count that. You do have to count the rests um, so that you don't play the next note too soon. The same thing happens in measure 25. Um, I guess that's the only two times for those rests. Um, in measure 21, we have uh, an E, which we haven't had in, most of you probably have not had in school yet. So you can either use fourth finger on the A string, or you can use open E. Okay, either way, but that's what that is. That's your E um, uh, on the top space. You can use either open or fourth finger on the A string. Um, now, in measure 57, um, that uh, we'll be talking about the slurs in just a minute, but in measure 57, it would be a good idea to pencil in a fourth finger over the A because you really don't want to try to switch strings to the open A on a slur. That's a little tricky. Try to use a fourth finger there if you can. Okay, so it's two, four, two, one. All right, um, so a lot of the, this is probably our easiest piece, but let's take a look at the slurs in measure 44, 45. Let's play through it kind of slowly. So um, obviously anytime you see the slur, you're going to play two notes in the same bow direction. So 45, why don't you play with me pretty slowly. One, two, ready, slur. And if that's tricky for you, you might want to just air bow and say the notes like F sharp E, D, E, F sharp B, D, C sharp, okay? Just so that you get the idea that the bow keeps moving while you change your fingers. Let's do that one one more time for measure 44. One, two, ready, slur. It's a little tricky, not just because of the slurs, but you also have a string crossing where you have to go from the F sharp to the B, changing strings from the D string to the A string. So practice that one several times. Um, you can pause the video right now if you want to practice that one several times. But I think we're ready. We're going to go ahead and play through from the beginning. Make sure you understand how the first and second endings work. From measure 40, we repeat back to 33. And then uh, the second time, you jump to the second ending, which is at measure 41. And then the same thing happens, um, first and second ending from 59 to 66. From 66, we go back to 59. And then we take the second ending the second time through. And I'll try to talk you through that as I play. All right, beginning. Play with me. One, two, ready, play. Down, lift. Forte loud. 
now the lift I did forget to mention the P and the F. The P stands for piano, which means quiet. The F stands for forte, which means loud. Um, when you see them both written, like in measure 43, the F and then the P, that means they want it the first time through, they want it forte, loud, and the second time they want it piano or soft. Um, and then it changes at 59, they want it piano the first time and forte the second time. So those little musical details will work out in rehearsal, but I just wanted you to know what that meant. Okay, have fun practicing. We'll see you at rehearsal.